Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. In this video, I want to talk about the Laptop Studio from Microsoft. I'm uh, in Clip Studio Paint doing a line test here, and so far I love it. It's amazing, um, pretty close to everything that I've wanted in a tablet for a long time. Uh, as a drawing machine, I think it's easier to use than the Surface Pro because you can use it um, closer to you, easier. The Surface Pro, the kickstand goes back. This one goes forwards. The fans are quiet and don't kick on um, as easily as the Surface Pro 7 i7 models. So um, it's lovely. It's really fast, really smooth, and the 120 hertz display is awesome. Um, it's 25% brighter, the screen is, and I'll demonstrate that here shortly. Now, here in this video, you can see I'm demonstrating different styluses with the new Laptop Studio. This is not the performance you get with the older devices. Surface Pro 8 and Laptop Studio get this type of performance. There's an improvement in the pens. So here you can see um, there's a good improvement over the Surface pens, uh, which I'm underlining right there. That's the second set of four and the third set of four. And um, I recommend if you are using the Laptop Studio that you use either the R520C stylus or the Slim Pen 2 and not really anything else. And I have uh, the Slim Pen 2 video up so you can see a more in-depth uh, review of the Slim Pen 2, the lower initial activation force, the haptics, all of that stuff. The uh, performance over the Surface Pro 7 Plus and anything older is considerable. So I would, I would recommend it if you're looking for a drawing machine, it's definitely faster. Um, here you're going to want to make sure if you're drawing that you use the best performance settings, not the recommended. It's going to reduce latency so that it's really nice and fast. And then also set your display here in the advanced settings to 120 hertz. It's going to make the screen buttery and really nice to draw on. And it's, it's, it's not a huge difference, but it's noticeable and it's, and it's really nice. Uh, you're not going to suffer without it, but it is, it's, um, it's just like one of those little things that just improves the performance. Um, and it improves the experience where you're like, oh, well, this is really fun uh, versus this works pretty good. And I think those are very different. So I think that's kind of the, the goal of the haptics inside of the uh, new devices. So here you can choose between inking or while interacting, that's drawing, you can choose, you can choose the intensity as well make it uh, less or more. And if you're drawing and you're doing little tiny detailed work without a lot of movement, then you're gonna want to go to Control Panel to Devices and Pen and Touch. So you're gonna wanna turn off Press and Hold for right click because it's gonna get in the way of you being able to draw little tiny details. It's going to trigger right click instead of um, Pen Input. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna jump from Clip Studio Paint, which is fantastic. I'm gonna do a video on uh, drawing programs that are optimized for touch screens because there's a pretty big difference whether or not you can use simultaneous pen and touch. You'll notice on the um, left side that I have the artist pad that I'm using to control the touch screens. You've got this beautiful, large canvas for artwork and then lots of controls that you can customize. So Rebel 4 is my favorite because it's, um, I've described it in uh, tutorials that I've done as a living canvas, and you'll see why here. It's nice that you have uh, impasto, in, it's nice that you have impasto depth. It always makes me think of the iOS game that my daughter plays, where everyone's sus. <laughs> All right, so here's the uh, living canvas. If you don't have a copy of either Clip Studio or uh, Rebel or any of the programs that I'll, I'll do a uh, video on in the next couple days, then you can find a 
uh, link in the description or one on my website. And uh, I've set those up to be affiliate links because I like to affiliate myself with things that I think are great. So. So while I'm doing this, what you'll notice is that the um, performance is really, really fast and smooth. The screen is brighter. And I think we're going to go ahead and jump ahead here. This is the brightness. So it gets it goes up to 500 nits. The current Surface Pro 7 Plus and lower is 400, about 400, and then lower as you get older. Uh, although there was, I think, one exception to that. All right, so here you can see the difference between the Surface Pro 7 Plus, which is a little bit wider and a little bit shorter. The long side is a little longer. The, the um, tall the vertical <laughs> side, the shorter side, is a little bit shorter than the Surface Pro 8. So you may be able to see that here as I, I put them next to each other. So uh, you should be able to see a difference in brightness when they're all down close. And I've tried to set the color temperature the same. And the Surface Pro 8 and the Surface Laptop Studio have a screen that supports HDR. So there's a bit of color difference, which you can see with the laptop studio being um, brighter. Everything here is set to max. So you're going to see some color differences based off of how bright the screen is. Here you can see right there. Uh, when you have the devices in hand, they don't feel dramatically bigger. Now the Surface Pro 7 feels dramatically lighter. Um, and it's not. I think it's maybe a sixth of a pound lighter or a fifth of a pound lighter than the Surface Pro 8, but it feels very different. It doesn't feel as thick. The uh, Surface Pro 8 feels like it's a solid piece of steel, and um, although you know it weighs about two pounds. But when you have the keyboard and the Surface Pro 8 together, the weight difference is not significant, nor is the thickness significant between the Pro 8 and the, let me just show you right here. So you can see there, it's not hugely significant. Like, I don't feel like I'm carrying around a Surface Book 3 15 inch, uh, which felt gigantic. This actually feels um, like a responsible size, which is a silly thing to say, but I think you guys probably understand. I don't feel like I've got a novelty cowboy hat on my hand, but the computer version, it's a really good, respectable size. Um, what other questions do you have? Uh, no improvement in drawing experience over the um, laptop studio to the Surface Pro 8. It's, it's as close to identical as I can test, as I can see. Um, the trackpad is great. I'll, I'll go into a full review on the laptop studio, but wanted to kind of compare those different things so you guys can see uh, kind of a... a overview of, of how the Laptop Studio performs. I am, again, a really big fan of the design because the Surface Pro 8, uh, the Surface Pro line scoots backwards to use it. This scoots forward to use it. It's got a sturdy base underneath it that weights down there. So when you're holding it and using it, it's easier to start doing artwork on than, in my opinion, the um, Surface Pro series, which is this is the first time that you've had a more powerful device with um, a big, bright screen and better drawing experience available. And um, at the moment, it, it seems heads and tails better than uh, 
the Surface Pro 7 Plus and lower. So, um, 30% improvement in drawing experience, I guess is what I would say, which is so hard to quantify, but, but I like it. I like it a lot. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you have a tablet and you use a stylus with it, this is a great channel for you. So please subscribe until next time. Stay creative and have a wonderful day.